Hey, Jessica Ostrom here, and I wanted to do a little live science experiment for you guys today. Well, it's not really an experiment, it's more of a demonstration. Uh, but I have a big workshop launching this month, actually two in July, uh, Quantum Fitness, which is all, all about the science and neuroscience of biohacking um, and using our ability to work out within and change our biochemistry um, through epigenetics. All big words, but really all simple. You know, we turn things on, we turn things off, we turn genetics on, we turn DNA off, we turn it on, right? And it's all controlled through, um, you know, everything from hypnosis, self hypnosis that I'll be teaching you guys, quantum technologies, um, you know, ancient wisdoms of our martial arts, the ability to intend and focus correctly. Um, and, and that really allows us to uh, move really quickly through this evolution. Obviously, unless you've been living under a rock, you can tell that the world is going through some major changes. People ask me all the time, you know, what, what is this ascension thing? And what is it to really mean to evolve? And what is shadow work? And what do we have to do to become enlightened? And you know, can I just take a pill? Can I just quantum leap? And the answer is, is basically obviously quantum leaping is a real thing as long as your cup isn't dirty. So um, I use this analogy a lot in teaching. Um, and so I thought I would actually demonstrate it since I'm just in my kitchen today getting ready for my big workshop. I thought I would take you through a little demonstration of what it actually takes to move the body and the you know the the mind body soul in union into a higher state of consciousness where you kind of move from that Buddhist premise of need want is you know need is that lack energy and it's um, all about that lack mentality and that victim mentality and when we're there we're really not powerful creators I mean we're we are actually powerful creators but we're creating a lot of things that we don't want. Now, when we move to kind of like that want energy, it's like the rebirth of the inner child. We start to play in abundance. We start to live in freedom. And then when we move into the isness, you know, we let go of judgment. We understand duality is just, you know, possibilities and the limits. We look at pain differently. We access love for our thinking mind versus our um, lack of love or painful love. So we begin to kind of shift into that higher level of consciousness and the biocomputer, your hard drive, is recalibrated. So I want to show you guys what is actually going to take you and a metaphor to demonstrate what it looks like from my perspective as an intuitive. Okay, so first I think we all start off with this like dirty cup, right? Like this is the analogy of the human body. Okay. Now the cup represents empty vessel, right? It can be filled with anything. It's clear, it's transparent, it's authentic, right? And then the dirt is kind of like what you're born into. Some of your family probably feels like fertilizer, right? Good growing ground, not so smelly good, right? So this is kind of like the idea of a human that is ready to take an incarnation. And, and, and this is your programs of your lineage, your bloodline, right? Your gender that you've chosen, um, your ancestors. And in this, in this dirt, there's a lot of vitality. There's a lot of minerals. There's a lot of substance. There's a lot of density. There's a lot of earth. There's a lot of stories that are compacted in this. So basically what I did was I scooped up some dirt and I packed it down. And I let it sit for like two weeks. So it's extra difficult to get out, right? It's like, it's not coming out. This is what you get when you incarnate. So what we do is we incarnate. And so the demonstration of spirit in the body is water, right? Water is gonna take the substance of anything it's given. It's going to take the shape of anything that it's given. And it, you know, I'm putting it in a cup so the water has taken the shape of a cup. You put a spirit in the body, it takes the this, this shape of a spirit, okay? So um, now we've got this pure positive consciousness, this pure water, in a dirty cup. Now, all of a sudden, it's not so transparent, is it? It's not so authentic. It's not authentically water and it's not authentically dirt. It's becoming something else. Now, this is creating vitality and information and substance and depth through this communication process. So this pure positive spirit enters the physical form and starts to kind of download and mix with all the particles of the body, right? Now, the soul consciousness and the higher consciousness 
are going to stay in the water form, but they're going to take this, the, the, the information of the dirt. And right now we cannot drink this, Ugh, right? It's not going to be drinkable, which means I'm not going to be able to create a pure positive life the way this is. Now, most of us grow up and we try to live lives this way. We feel like we're pure. We feel like we're just water. We feel like we're malleable and transparent. But really, as I let this sit, this water is gonna get muddier and muddier and muddier and muddier. So as you sit in your mud, in your fertilizer, in your stories, in your downloaded programs that you were gifted in your body, your water just gets muddier and muddier and muddier. It gets thicker, it gets denser, it gets cloudier, and it gets more cynical, it gets more judgmental. These are some of the emotional aspects of it. It gets um, it, it gets like, like sludge, right? So if I leave this for 20 years, you know, we know some people like that, right? I think they're called Karens, which I feel bad because I know some really amazing Karens, but they become these people that are just like mad at the world. Therefore, they want your water to be dirty too. So they see a clean cup of water next to them and they're immediately in judgment or jealousy. So they wanna pour some of their negativity in your cup, right? You know people like this, they might be your family. And so the ascension process or our our biochemical upgraded ascension process that we're all in right now, this biohacking, is about purifying this water. Okay, so what is it gonna require? This is where we learn that pain is actually one of our greatest teachers. Because we know that it takes pressure to create a diamond, and the only way that I'm actually going to get this water clean, because if I dump it out, I have nothing, and I'll be starving for something else. I'll be starving for someone else's water. Starving for someone else's water, because I'll forget that all I have to do is turn the tap on, right? So in order for me to ascend or evolve or go through my enlightenment phase, I gotta lighten up, I gotta lighten this water up. So I have to start emptying, right, some of this pain out. Now how most people do this is they empty the pain out in other people. They also empty the pain out in the form of helping others until their cup feels very empty. Yet guess what still remains? Look at what still remains. Nothing has moved. I've given away everything I wish I had. I've poured my negativity onto people and now my cup is empty. Yet I still have an inch worth of density, okay? So the only way that I am gonna become enlightened is if I begin to channel or bring more water, more source, more, more universe, more God, whatever, into my body, right? Because my body is a creator. This is what's gonna magnetize, this is electromagnetic energy. It's pulsing with particles and fertilizer and growth opportunities, but we know that growth has been pretty painful. Now, to this dirt, I wonder how this water is gonna feel because the only way for me to purify this dirt is for me to put some pressure. I gotta turn this all the way on. You know how I'm always telling you guys, turn your light all the way on because a sun will blind the bugs. And if you have your light just a trickle, you'll attract bugs, right? Your muddy water, you're wondering why you're getting bit all the time, jabbed, attacked, right? So what I gotta do is I gotta start the ascension process. I have to purify, I have to channel, I have to bring that higher consciousness constantly into my body. Hopefully you guys can see this, okay? My screen is limited. I'm afraid my phone's gonna drop. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going. You see, it's like not even there yet. Like there's twigs coming out. I just saw a bug, right? So it's all coming out. So I've been I've been doing this for I don't know a couple of seconds now, and look, my cup is still disgusting. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour it out. Tears, energy work. Quantum healing, hypnosis, body work, exercise, good diet, get some of that out, forgiveness work, shadow work, dark night of the soul. That's the dark night of the soul right there, okay? Now I'm gonna keep purging. I'm gonna keep flushing, keep working, keep flowing like a river. I'm just gonna let this flow, okay? Now eventually, I'm gonna keep pouring out. This is what we call detox, spiritual detox, right? When we get rid of um, the toxic boyfriend, that's a pour. 
as a pour over. <coughs> Sorry, I had to get in my garbage disposal. It's getting real cloudy in here. Now, I'm giving all this back to the earth. Hi guys, part two of my enlightenment demonstration video. You know, I've been, it took me over 10 minutes to kind of empty out that cup. And I just been sitting here refilling it and refilling it and refilling it and refilling it. You know, putting some soap in and some good things and some good mindsets and taking out some belief systems and clearing out my ancest ancestry stuff and activating DNA. And look, you can see through it. It's transparent. It's drinkable. It is absorbable. It takes on any shape in its purest form, right? So this is what enlightenment looks like from a demonstration um, as an intuitive when I'm looking at someone and I can see the dark, deep, compacted dirt that's down in there. It's not a place of judgment. It is an understanding that we are having a very physical experience as spirit. And sometimes we forget that the smartphone that we bought into that streams the Wi-Fi through it came downloaded with some apps and stuff that we may not have wanted to be there. So it is our responsibility to literally clean out our cup and never live from an empty cup because your life will be extremely painful, right? You'll be starving for attention. You'll be starving for food. You'll be starving for other people. And when your cup is full, and it's clean, you can keep feeding the world because you know that all you have to do is go refill it. Now, you're giving the world fresh, clean water, and as soon as it's coming in, you're pouring it out. That is found in your abundance. This is found in your freedom. And guess what? You don't need anybody else's cup next to you. You love the cup that you're in. This cup can be bent and weaved in any shape because if I pour this cup into a teapot, it's gonna take the the version of the teacup now if i throw it in some freezer it's going to turn into ice and i create solid so the understanding of water and mist and ice is a perfect analogy of the me myself and i or mind body spirit when i am in a place of steam i am particles of consciousness waiting to take shape now when i take shape of something i become a cup when i put this into the freezer, I become a solid cup. See, right now I'm malleable. I can give, I can receive, and then if I become ice, I become solid. So at any time, all I have to do is heat myself up. That's why you guys are being pressured. That's why you're being triggered. That's why the whole world is unfolding so we can get back to our clean cup. Hopefully you guys love this demonstration. It's one of my favorites, and I will see you guys all in the Vision Quest workshop.